PlayStation hosted its second state of play in a month with a deep dive into The Last of Us Part 2 today. Game director Neil Druckmann took us through over 20 minutes of gameplay and story details, including a playthrough of a previously unseen section of the game. Welcome back to Game Gentlemen. We've watched and re-watched the state of play to break down five things we learnt from The Last of Us Part 2. Number 5. The Story Druckmann opens the video by taking us through a summary of the core cool story. Last of Us Part 2 starts several years after the events of the first game. Joel and Ellie have settled in Jackson, Wyoming, which, if you'll remember, was the settlement where we met Joel's brother Tommy in the first game. Life seems to have been stable for the past few years, with Ellie growing up and making connections and relationships throughout the community. We are told that the community suffers a traumatising event which sets Ellie and us on the path of the story. Number 4. Traversal One of the first glimpses of gameplay we get in the video explains some of the updated traversal options for The Last of Us Part 2. Ellie is now able to jump and climb more freely in order to navigate the world and cross gaps we would have not otherwise have been able to in the first game. Verticality has been introduced into the world design with the ability to avoid certain confrontations, use ropes to climb and swing, and crawl through air ducts as we see in the gameplay at the end of the video. Ellie will be able to navigate the environments on horseback, via boat, and of course by foot. Ellie has obviously also learnt how to swim since the first title as we see her dive underwater several times in the gameplay section. Number 3. Crafting Crafting was a core component of the original and it's back in part 2. In the state of play video we see Ellie collect and sometimes walk past crafting materials and craft items such as smoke bombs and molotov cocktails on the fly. We even see Ellie craft a silencer for her pistol, allowing for a stealthy approach, however its use seems limited to 3 shots before it breaks. Upgrading skills and weapons also features in the video through collecting training manuals and scavenging for new parts in the environment. From the symbols in the video that we see, we can assume that there are skill upgrades for combat, crafting, stealth and precision, as well as a fifth unlockable skill that we don't get to see. Naughty Dog has also confirmed that depending on what paths you take in the game, what conflicts you encounter, or avoid, you are likely not to find every upgrade option in a single playthrough. Number 2. The Enemies the video outlines two major human factions that we will encounter along the way. The Washington Liberation Front, a militia group which appears well armed, well trained and well resourced. Throughout the trailer we can see them carrying automatic weapons, communicating over radio and accompanied by dogs, who have the ability to sniff Ellie out even when in stealth and alert their humans to her whereabouts. Additionally, once a dog has caught your scent, it will follow your trail, so action and conflict will be much more tense as you have to continually move in order to avoid confrontation. The second group is a religious cult called the Seraphites, or Scars. As opposed to the WLF, the Seraphites use more of a stealth based approach and are armed with more traditional weapons such as bows and arrows. And then, of course, we move to the Cordyceps Infected, which are an ever present threat. Runners appear in higher numbers and are more vicious this time around, clickers are just as deadly, and we're introduced to new infected types, the stalkers who will use stealth to sneak attack the player, and the shamblers who are covered in gross pustules and will spray an area with poisonous gas if they get close enough to the player. Druckmann teases that the most terrifying and lethal forms of infected are still waiting for us when we finally get our hands on the game. But we think it's bears. It's gotta be bears. Lastly, we see an area where there are both infected and human enemies, and the game allows for interactions to be forced between the two, potentially buying the player time, thinning out enemy numbers, or simply allowing you to escape a potential combat situation. Number 1. The Combat We see different moments of combat throughout the video, from stealth killing enemies from afar using the silenced pistol or bow and arrow behind cover and hiding in long grass, confronting enemies with brutal melee weapons crafted to deadly impact, using throwables such as shrapnel grenades and smoke bombs to stun and incapacitate enemies, and quick time events to fight off the infected. We see hand-to-hand -hand combat in the form of Ellie confronting a machete-wielding enemy, dodging and countering attacks, using enemies as human shields as you take out others in the vicinity, 
and using her knife on multiple occasions, including the machete confrontation we mentioned earlier, indicating to us that perhaps the knife won't be a perishable item like the shivs were in the original. And that's 5 things we learnt from The Last of Us 2 State of Play. It probably goes without saying that this game looks like it's going to be absolutely brutal. The Last of Us Part 1 wasn't exactly a happy walk in the park, but this appears to be going to some very dark places. We're still aware that there are people out there trying to spoil the leaked story beats for others on YouTube and social media platforms, so we've turned off comments for this video. If you like this video and are looking forward to playing The Last of Us Part 2 in just a few short weeks, hit that like button. If you're new to our channel, hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with all of our content. This is Game Gentleman, and thanks for watching.